Today in this video, you will come to know about the terminologies related to coordination compounds. First one that is central metal atom. It accepts an electron pair from an atom, ion or molecules to form a coordinate bond. Usually, central metal atom is the one which belongs to d-block elements. Due to their small size, high effective nuclear charge and availability of vacant d orbitals. If you remember the example of K4FeCN6, there the central metal atom is iron. Now coming to second point that is density. So density is the number of donor sites which a ligand has. On the basis of number of donor sites, ligands can be classified in many ways like monodentate ligands, bidentate, tridentate, tetradentate and so on. Also, if they have any charge on them, then we can call them as anionic ligand, cationic ligand or a neutral ligand. So let's first talk about monodentate ligands. So monodentate ligands are the one which have one donor site, means they can form only one coordinate bond. You can see in the table that these are anionic ligands, like you can see here, chloride, sulfide, carbonate, sulfate. So these all ions belong to anionic ligands and since they form only one coordinate bond, hence they are categorized under monodentate ligands. Now second one that is cationic ligand. If a ligand is having positive charge, then we call it as cationic ligand. And here in the table, you can see NO plus that is nitrosonium ion, NO2 plus that is nitronium ion. So all these form only a single coordinate bond. Hence, they are categorized under monodentate ligand. And the last one that is neutral ligand, which has no charge like water, ammonia, NH3, which is written as and carbonyl. So all these belong to monodentate ligands. Similarly, when we talk about bidentate ligands, which has two donor sites, ligand can be cationic, anionic or neutral based on the chart present on it. So in the table here, you can see some bidentate ligands like oxalate, that is C2O4 2 minus, ethane 1 2 diamine, which is also known as ethylene diamine, represented as EN. All these are bidentate ligands. If there are three donor sites in a ligand, then it is known as a tridentate ligand. Four donor sites, then it is a tetradentate. Five donor sites, pentadentate. Six donor sites, hexadentate and so on. So in the table, you can see the formula for each and every ligand mentioned here. All the ligands which have two or more donor sites come under the category of polydentate ligands. Now coming to our next category of ligands that is ambidentate ligands. The ambidentate ligands are the bidentate ligands which form a coordinate bond only through one donor atom. Like we saw in the example of K4FeCN6, bond was formed through carbon atom. That cyanide ion that is Cn, it has two donor sites. That means it can form bond either from carbon or from nitrogen. So it comes under the category of ambidentate ligands. Similarly, if I talk about nitro compound NO2, nitrogen can also form a bond as well as oxygen can also form a bond. When bond is formed through nitrogen atom, it is known as nitro or sometimes it is written as nitrito N. But when bond is formed through oxygen atom, then it is written as nitrito O. This is the ambidentate ligands. Now coming to the next category that is flexidentate ligands. So these are the polydentate ligands which do not necessarily use all their donor sites at one time. Whatever is the requirement, they will form that much number of bonds. And the last one that is chelating ligand. Suppose there is a polydentate ligand and it is combining with the metal to form a ring like structure. That ligands are known as chelating ligands and this effect is known as chelation. You know, whenever a 5 or 6 membered ring is formed, it is much more stable. So chelating ligands provide stability to the complex. You can see here in the example that ethylene diamine is forming bond with the metal atom and it is forming a 5 membered ring. 
so which provides stability to the complex. Now this was all about the ligands. Now coming to another term that is oxidation number. So it is simply the charge present on the metal atom. Now next one that is coordination number. Coordination number tells us that how many bonds are formed by the ligands with the central metal atom. By knowing coordination number, you can identify the hybridization as well as geometry of the complex. See in the table what it is written. If coordination number is 2, then geometry is linear and hybridization is sp. If coordination number is 4, then hybridization can be sp3 or dsp2 and their respective geometries will be tetrahedral and square planar. If coordination number is 6, that means it can have a hybridization of sp3d2 or d2sp3. For both the hybridizations, geometry will be octahedral. So these were the terms related to coordination compound.